Welcome to Friendly Pharmacy 5. My name is Lindsay Dixon and I'm a pharmacist here from British Columbia, Canada. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. Today we will be discussing the COVID-19 vaccines. So one of the most common questions is how can these vaccines be safe if they were developed so quickly? This is a great question because never before have we seen vaccines being made in real time. So let me explain it. First of all, there has been global collaboration because of the emergency of this pandemic. So scientists from all over the world have stopped whatever projects they were working on and they've been solely focused on the COVID-19 vaccine project. And this has happened all over the world, which is why we have various vaccines that are going through clinical trials. And it's really amazing what can happen when the best scientists in the world actually get together for one cause. The second reason is funding. So often these companies or laboratories would have to generate incredible amounts of funding and companies would actually have to take the risk for this type of research. The thing is with COVID-19, it's in everyone's interest that this problem be resolved. And so governments and different health authorities have actually taken on this risk and provided funding even before we knew if some of these vaccines would actually make it through clinical trials. The third reason is due to what we call rolling data reviews. So instead of these clinical trials rolling out, waiting till they're done, and then having all of that information submitted to the regulatory authorities, the authorities have actually been reviewing the data as it comes in. And in doing this, this really speeds up the process. It also makes it more efficient because if they see anything that they don't really like or they need clarification on or some data point that needs to be revised, that actually happens in real time rather than them waiting until the trial is over and then having to go back and review or correct whatever has been specified. So that has really helped accelerate the process as well. The fourth aspect of this is the accessibility to large quantities of volunteers for these clinical trials. Often those who are developing a vaccine or doing any kind of clinical trial of any nature have a hard time recruiting volunteers for their clinical trials. And this can take a lot of time because COVID-19 is presenting us with widespread infection. And because this is a global health issue, it was very easy to get volunteers to participate in these studies. And it was also quite quick for the data to be collected because the infections happened so quickly. And you will see in the clinical trials that these studies actually took place in areas where there was a high incidence of community transmission, which allowed the laboratories and those involved in clinical trials to collect the data that they needed in a speed that was much quicker than we normally would see. So those are the main reasons that these vaccines have been able to come to market so quickly. Now we enter phase four of the clinical trial. And so the collection of data does not stop now. There will be continued evaluation, monitoring, and there will be a lot of data collection that will happen now as we see how these vaccines actually react and how they are effective in the real world. And this is also very important because we're going to learn more about how these vaccines might work better in certain populations, whether they reduce transmission, whether they actually can cause what we call sterility. And when I say that, I mean sterility from the infection itself. Do the vaccines actually completely prevent infection or do they only prevent severe infection? And that is something that we will learn as time goes on. So let's review. Why were the vaccines developed so quickly? Global collaboration, access to funding, rolling data reviews, availability of volunteers for clinical trials, and high prevalence of community transmission, which allowed for the quick collection of data as infections occurred rapidly. But isn't mRNA brand new technology? How should we trust it and how do we know it's safe? mRNA technology is actually not as new as you may think. 
This has been studied for over a decade in different types of cancer treatments. The Moderna laboratories have actually had quite a few mRNA vaccines in clinical trials, and you can look that up on their website. This has been happening since about 2011. So there is a lot that we already knew about mRNA and the potential for using mRNA in different therapeutics. And this is part of the reason that the mRNA vaccines were able to be produced so quickly. What took the most amount of time were the actual clinical trials where the mRNA was tested for safety and efficacy. So just to recap, mRNA has been studied in oncology for over 10 years and Moderna has multiple clinical trials currently involving mRNA vaccines. They are all at different stages and they have been working on various vaccines with mRNA technology since 2011. The mRNA vaccines are actually preservative free. They do not contain mercury. They do contain mRNA. They do contain some lipid-like products that help to uh, surround the mRNA in what we call a lipid nanoparticle, which is a capsule that helps to protect the mRNA as it is quite unstable on its own. Now this lipid nanoparticle is composed of something that we call uh, polyethylene glycol. Please note that this is not antifreeze. Polyethylene glycol is actually found in a lot of different cosmetics. It's found in some manufactured foods. It's really all around us and if you go around your house you'll be able to find a lot of products that do contain polyethylene glycol. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you feel a little bit more informed. This video has been sponsored by Heart Pharmacy. If you would like more information, resources, and links to upcoming videos, you can sign up for the Heart Pharmacy newsletter at www.heartpharmacy.com newsletter.